Did you know Google Maps has an incognito mode, so you could search and drive off to any location without Maps ever remembering where you went and no search history? You're welcome. Now, to turn this on, tap on your profile picture and then tap on Turn on incognito mode. It's going to give you this small write-up which I recommend you go through. And now you can search for any destination, any route or any directions and it's not going to save that history. So if I click on my search input field, you can see there's nothing else to show. Next, you could have your phone read out any article that's open on your phone's browser without installing any third-party app. For example, here's an article open on my Chrome. I can just say Google and then just say read this article. It's going to scan the article and quickly pop open a player that's going to start reading out the article word by word. And if I want the article read out faster, I can choose my playback speeds as well. And in the notification tray, I can also skip forward or go backward. And so you could be commuting, walking or driving. And if you still like to read your articles, as long as you've got a pair of earphones, you could let Google do the reading for you. Okay, next, if you or your family member wants to keep track of each other's location, you could do so using Google Maps. There's a feature built right into it. So if you want to share your location, tap on your picture and then click on location sharing. Then opt for new share and now you can decide how long do you want your location to be shared for. You can decide the number of hours after which the location sharing will turn off automatically. And then you can decide who you wish to share with or you can just create a link. You can also indefinitely share your location until you manually turn it off. And for those of you who find it sneaky, please understand this can only happen if the person who wants to share the location gives permission. So it's all voluntary. And guys, before we move on, if any of this is useful, it would mean a lot to me if you could show some support. All you gotta do is hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all. That's it. All right, now let's move on. If you're trying to lock a file or prevent it altogether from opening, there's a neat trick that you can do in Android. So let's say I have a PDF file here. I long press it and then I tap on rename. And now I can just change the extension to something that the system will not recognize. Of course, you may choose to change the entire name, including the extension, but you may not remember that in the long run. So just the extension is good. And now if you try to open the file, it's not gonna be able to. Anyway, when it's time for you to retrieve the file, you can just go back and rename it to the original extension. And that's it. Now, if you tap on the file, it's going to open up as it intended to. Of course, this only makes sense if you've got like a handful of files that you can change the extensions for and you can remember. If you've got a lot of files, this is not the solution for that. And you can use the same trick to extract audio from a video file without using any app. For example, I've got a video file here. And as you can see, when I tap on video player, it opens up as a video. Now, long press it, rename it, and change the extension from MP4 to MP3. That is it. It automatically changes it into an audio file, as you can see right here. And when I tap on it, it's gonna to want to open up with a music player. Just a word of caution, you might want to duplicate the file and change the extension of just one of them. So that way you have both files. Now, I don't like giving my phone to other people. And in the odd chance that I have to, I'm always worried if they're gonna start exploring my phone. Now, Android has this feature called Pin Windows that prevents people from doing that. You just have to activate it. Let's say I want to pin this YouTube app so no one can go beyond this app. I tap on Recent Apps, tap on the YouTube icon, and then pin this app. That's it. Now, I can be within YouTube. I could go full screen. Uh, I could go back and play another video, but I would not be able to leave YouTube at all. And if you see, I cannot exit the app. I cannot go to the home screen. I cannot tap on the recent apps menu and jump into another app. The only way to exit this is if someone knows the pin or the pattern to unlock. So you tap on the recent apps and the back key together and then put in the pin and that's how you get back outside. Now to activate pin windows, just go into settings and search for pin windows and then just make sure that it is turned on. And that's it, that's how it's done. And I think it's a great feature for parents because they tend to give their phone to their children or babies. So yeah, put that YouTube video, pin the damn app, and they can't do anything funny. Next, let's say I search for something on Google and then I tap on the first search result. I can now go on to the second and the third and the fourth search result using this search navigation at the top. Now this is not turned on by default, but you can turn it on using Chrome flags. So open up your Chrome and then type in Chrome flags as you see on the screen here, and then search for search. You'll see something called as continuous search navigation. Just make sure that is enabled, that's it. 
Another quirky little flag that you can activate in Chrome is the Dino widget. So just enable that and then go into your home screen, search for widgets and you'll see that the Chrome Dino widget shows up. Or you could open up the Chrome widgets and get the Chrome search widget out. But this time it's going to show the Dino widget to you as well. And yeah, like the regular Chrome search widget, it's gonna do everything that it generally does, which is, you know, quickly open up incognito mode or the Google lens mode. But now at will, whether you're online or offline, you can play the Dino game whenever you want to. Now, generally, if you have a non-Google Android phone and you want to look at weather, you open up Google, search for weather, tap on today, and then you start looking at the forecast. It's a pretty long process. But here's what you can do. So the next time you search for widget, tap on the overflow menu and tap on add to home screen. When you do that, it creates that weather widget that you get with Google Android phones, but on a non-Google Android phone now. And now when you tap on that widget, it directly opens up on the weather forecast. And yeah, that's how you get it on your Android phone as well. And lastly, I wanted to talk about routines. That's a feature built into Google Assistant. So if you go into Google, tap onto your profile picture, go into settings and Google Assistant and search for routines, you'll see that it's right there. What it does is that with just one command, it can do multiple things sequentially for you. In fact, there are a few routines that are already made for you. For example, if you said good morning or tell me about my day, these are the series of things it's going to do. You can obviously modify this, but more importantly, you can add this to your home screen. So you don't even have to say this to your Google Assistant. Just tap on the widget that's on your home screen and it'll execute all of this. This one, for example, is made for you when you're about to hit the bed. So you could say any of these phrases and it's going to do all of these things for you. What you can also do is play a specific song or artist or playlist. So you could go into music and you can just type it out here. And under music settings, you can set which player you'd like to use. And you can completely create a new one all by yourself. So a lot of times, for example, I get into a meeting, I forget to turn my phone into D&D mode. So I quickly created a routine wherein if I tap on it, it puts my phone into D&D mode for 15 minutes and then takes it out again. So with just one tap, it gets into D&D mode and 15 minutes later comes out of it. And now I can place this onto my home screen. So as soon as I'm in the meeting, I just have to tap on it and that's it. You know, I don't have to activate Google Assistant to be able to do that. All right, and that's it guys. Now, if this video was helpful, you're gonna love this video. Make sure you check it out. And as always guys, if you did enjoy watching this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.